Hello, my name is Sarah Briggs. I'm the Collections Development Officer at the Museums Association. Welcome to this conversation, Adapting Digital, addressing how digital engagement can connect with audiences. When UK museums closed their doors in March 2020, they instantly lost their direct connection to audiences, not just in visitors through the doors, but also in their engagement, learning and outreach programmes. Events had to be cancelled and engagement projects paused. However, museums seemed quick to adapt. Through our Esme Fairburn Collections funded projects, we certainly saw a swift response. Many of our projects changing their planned physical engagement to be delivered digitally. We also launched a new type of grant as a response to these changing needs in museums. These were sustaining engagement with collections grants of up to £30,000. They were imagined as quick turnaround, innovative interventions to support engagement with collections at a time when physical and traditional access wasn't possible. The call for applications was heavily oversubscribed. In December 2020, the Museums Association partnered with UKRI and AHRC to launch yet another funding stream, the Digital Innovation and Engagement Fund. This fund built on the liminal space Mindsets for Museums of the Future report, a piece of rapid research commissioned by UKRI. The fund offered grants for one year projects that supported museums to explore digital innovation and to evaluate, refine, and build on their recent digital engagement. Again, this fund was also heavily oversubscribed. Our three panelists today represent organizations that have benefited from each of these three funds and have either used them to explore new practice or had to suddenly change their approach to planned work as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. They are Andrea Hadley-Johnson from the National Justice Museum, Michael Hardy from Barnsley Museums, and Liz Gilmore from Hastings Contemporary. Thanks for joining us here today to share your knowledge and experience. Um, I wonder if I could briefly ask you first to tell us which of the funds you've benefited from and what for. Can I ask Andrea first, please? Hi, thanks, Sarah. Um, yes, the National Justice Museum benefited from the Esme Fairburn Museum Collections Fund and our project's called Ingenuity, and the idea is that we will use a collection of historic museum objects that have been crafted by people in prison to co-produce an exhibition with people that are currently impacted upon by the criminal justice system. Michael, can I hand over to you now, please? I'm Michael Hardy, I'm from Bowser Museums, and the funding from Esme Fairburn um, enabled us to do Draw Hope, um, that promoted and well-being for, for the young people throughout the act of drawing and um, through that um, engaging um, young people and building skills and confidence and to bring their voices to into, into the new interpretation of the Sabbath collection at the Cooper Gallery. Thanks Michael. Liz over to you please. We were absolutely delighted to receive £50,000 from the Digital Innovation and Engagement Fund um, for Hastings this was catalytic because it meant we can roll out our telepresence robot and bring school children into the gallery and connect them globally and also uh, to work with disabled groups and bring them to the gallery. Everyone who has suffered from isolation and being marginalised through lockdown, we've been able to sustain those connections. Thanks very much Liz. Um, I wonder if I could begin our discussion now by asking each of you to um, describe the impact that COVID had on your engagement plans um, and how you adapted to this. I, I'm the digital engagement curator. It's a, it's a, a job that I started in 2019. So I had, um, I had um, nine months of finding my feet and then obviously last year and um, things changed um, completely. One of the things that I've noticed is that um, digital has, has the ability to be flexible. Things can be changed on a whim, um, usually. It can be quite experimental, and that's kind of what Barnes Museums have done in the last 12 months. And also, with, with this funding, it's, it's allowed us to do exciting and, 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 and inspirational things. 
one, one of the things that has been adapted from a purely um, on-site uh, idea was the idea of turning a, a photo into a digital jigsaw. I just did that as a one-off and, and it kind of worked really well. So well, in fact, that BBC News Online picked up on that and from there, it just kind of went done worldwide and turned into a daily challenge. Especially in, in the time of the first quite strict lockdown, people embrace this moment of joy in a time where um, these moments are quite fleeting. But also, and, and as importantly, people have never um, engaged with us online in this way, and people spending 10 minutes plus concentrating on a piece of artwork. It's some brought people together online. On Twitter, there's a group of people who, who take part every day. And it kind of shows that Barnes Museums can connect quite um, locally, but also um, there is this potential to have a, a much more global reach. People can join in a two-way conversation around just posting online every now and again. It's turned much more uh, meaningful. We've done a lot more video content. So an example of that from last year was I created a game of Barnes and Bingo. The numbers had been linked to an object from our collection. And in short videos, I would um, choose these at random and then just speak about them for a couple of minutes. And, and it, it found an audience because people kind of got bored of seeing the um, same content that had been produced a lot during lockdown. We've also been mindful that people aren't always online. People don't always follow us on Facebook. They, they aren't on Twitter. Um, they don't have the, the, have the ability to, to actually, actually have, 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 the, have, the, have the devices all the time to go on our website. So um, being kind, kind of mindful of that is, is trying to make our collections and, and our, um, our projects available to, to care homes as care packs. So this time last year, we'd been making hundreds and hundreds of, of, of culture care packs that, that feature things like film shows and books and games and activities that have been sent out to all care homes in Barnsley, but also community groups and packs have been made for in school groups. In the last 18 months, the actual term, term um, digital is embedded in everything that Barnes, Barnes Museums does and hopefully, hopefully um, continues to do in the future now that the um, five venues have now, uh, are now, um, now uh, 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 opened and things have, come, have sort of come, come back to normal in a sense. Thanks, Michael. Um, yeah, Barnes Museums has been really, really busy on, uh, on its social media throughout the whole of the lockdown. And I remember your jigsaws being one of the first sort of collections based pieces of digital, um, digital engagement that I saw um, in the first lockdown. So um, it, it, yeah, it feels like you were, you were quite agile in your, in your response um, and, and certainly found a way to reach um, mass audiences with your approach. Um, so yeah, really interesting to hear about how you thought about fitting into people's daily routines. Thanks very much for that. Really interesting as well what you were saying about um, not being able to reach all audiences and not everybody being able to engage and digitally. Um, I wonder if I could hand over to Andrea now with the same question. It, it was almost an instinctive response, I think, for my team. Um, we just opened an exhibition called Constraint Restraint, and that had been built on thousands of, of responses from people across the UK about the constraints they um, would like to be free from in their lives. Who'd have known what an amazing theme that would be <laughs> when, the, when the gallery had to close so suddenly? So I called out for letters um, for people to write a letter about their very personal constraint within this emerging societal constraint. It was a six week call out and we had 64 letters back from people across the UK and other parts of the world. The thing that we learned from that is to, to blend the digital and the physical. So people told us that the act of physically writing helped them to make sense of what was happening in their lives and that the act of sharing it and then us sharing it digitally validated their feelings where people were separated and feeling isolated. So this idea of iteratively and generatively connecting people and gathering a momentum towards something else and giving the team courage to be more confident with stepping into something new. So we've got a virtual tour of the gallery that we managed to complete on the day that we vacated the museum. So anything that happened subsequently could be placed within the virtual tour of the exhibition as an annotation. We were in the process of developing a museum bicycle and that meant that we could take objects and, and creative activity out into the city. But even that was out of bounds really during, during the lockdown. So we put the workshops into envelopes and then we've got one here. So it's stamped workshop in an envelope. It's stamped on the back with love from the Justice Museum. And we pop these in the post. So this one, I'm opening it now. 
There's a little <laughs> postcard inside, and this is for the Ingenuity project that Esme Fairburn have funded. It's a portrait carved from soap. It's from the museum collection. It smells gorgeous. And it was carved by someone in a prison cell in the 1970s. So in the envelope is a bar of soap and some tools that don't really look like tools. So they're safe, a lolly stick, a spoon, and a very, very simple, thank you for taking part, set of instructions, just four things to do to carve your soap. And then we invited people to send images of their soap carving back. Some of the soap carvings came back in the post as well. So again, for us, it was about a kind of ebb and flow between physical and digital. And of course, lockdown hit the prison community in the same way, in some ways, far more harshly than people outside of the prison community. Uh, men and women were locked into their cells for 23 hours a day. So these workshops in an envelope were just brilliant to then send into the prisons because we couldn't physically be there. The feedback from these has been phenomenal, poignant and really moving feedback in that, for example, someone said carving the soap stopped them from carving their skin. Um, people have learned a new skill from picking up this bar of soap and feeling connected to someone that had carved that decades ago. Um, and then these soaps are going out also digitally and into communities within the city. So there's something really interesting beginning to happen with that blended approach to um, encourage empathy, I suppose, between encourage empathy between different communities, closed and open communities of people. Thanks for sharing, Andrea, um, and especially, you know, the really powerful feedback that you got from that project. That's really, really moving. Um, I think uh, your project was an existing project. You had your activities sort of planned out, didn't you, before COVID hit? So um, it's been one I've seen develop all the way through and all your new approaches. And I think it's, it's fair to say you've had um, uh, some really, like, really, really interesting engagement as a result of, of COVID. Obviously, you know, not that it's a good thing that the pandemic hit, but it's definitely um, taken your project in a slightly different direction, which I think is is really really fascinating and um and, and really powerful um and really interesting to think about and um, some of the the audiences who as you say can't won't don't visit us and some of the people for whom um the lockdowns yeah had a particularly large impact on and you know in your in your project it's people who are incarcerated um liz i wonder if i could um pass the same question on to you then so um can you describe the impact COVID had on your engagement plans and how you adapted to this? We, we had been thinking around, um, as part of our engagement activity, working with a robot with telepresence technology to bring and connect children who are in hospices to the gallery. The, these robot tours are a bit like a virtual golf buggy. So five living rooms of people can get on board virtually. We were expecting to be able to show everyone our great exhibitions, and we did. But actually, uh, what happened was that the connection with each other was the most profound thing. The first robot tour that I did had someone from Switzerland, another person from Dubai, someone from America, and a wheelchair user within Hastings. Um, and um, we all had a conversation looking around the exhibition together. So we, we decided that engagement would continue virtually. We did exhibition openings with the robots. Sir uh, Quentin Blake, the incredible artist and illustrator, opened his exhibition via robot. In a way, being put at threat, at risk with COVID, we were able to innovate in a way we perhaps wouldn't. And it was a reminder for us that COVID, the impact, is there every day for some of our visitors. And perhaps that we hadn't really looked at that in sufficient detail before. Um, so it's really transformed, I suppose, the way that we're thinking around our learning and participation and how we really pitch now with the Museums Association's help to sustain connection with all the schools who can't go on trips at the moment and also with disabled people in a much more sustained way. 
Thanks very much, Liz. I think, um, yeah, your project um, it, it's a really great example of how um, the development and, and use of digital throughout COVID um, can have a much um, more significant long-term impact on audiences who, mm. who just you, you simply can't can't visit for, for you know many many different mm. reasons. So we've had periods of lockdown coupled with periods of doors being open. So can you um, tell me what you've learned from the ways you've worked over the last year and a half, in, especially in terms of the pitfalls and benefits of some of these new ways of working? What has happened across the team, I think, is that we've been able to connect really quickly and experimentally with people to continue that very kind, open, considered way of co-producing with people that they might not want to come or can't come to the museum physically for whatever reason. So for me, that mantra of people outside the museum shape and inform what happens inside the museum is stronger than ever. Being, being able, able to have the um, confidence to, um, to um, um, try new things out, but also encourage the team as well um, to embrace digital. And it's, it's kind of, it's, it, 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 it has changed the way that, uh, that the, um, the um, team, team now works as a whole. Um, engagement can't continue in, 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 in that same way as it did, did this time last year where, where um, um, the focus was, was very much online day in day out but um, it's kind of an extra way for us to, to, us, to, us to um, 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 share the stories and join in conversations and it's, it's us now trying to um, try and, try and bring balance to, 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 to the um, world also keeping us quite local and, keep, and keeping us grounded. I think a really significant thing was the way it galvanised our team and changed the, the nature of jobs at the gallery. So um, uh, I, as the director, was giving tours, robot tours and meeting everyone. But really significantly was that we really, um, in a sense, broke down the boundaries between our front of house staff, who are the face of, of our gallery and the volunteers. We have 60 brilliant volunteers. Uh, but also the learning participation team. Um, we have a group of educators, freelance educators, and we have these new sort of hybrid roles, for hybrid front of house roles, because we all know we might be living with COVID in a longer term way. And in these new roles, people can meet the public physically in the flesh or do these tours. And so we were able to train our staff um, and work that out together because this we there wasn't a pro forma that we could follow we weren't quite sure how you do these so we've created a kind of toolkit if you like of how to do these things um, that is that has brought the team together within Hastings our front of house and back of house it's really exciting we wouldn't want to go back any other way so uh, thank you all for sharing your experiences um, today it, it feels very much like this, you know, this terrible extreme circumstance gave all of your organisations in different ways permission for experimentation, um, which has led to um, reaching audiences and finding the best way to reach those audiences as well um, throughout this time. Um, and thinking about um, those who can't visit, those who won't visit, um, and, and finding blended and alternative approaches as well as purely digital approaches to reaching those audiences um, for whom digital isn't an option um, and also just to think I think what, what we've learned from you all today is that this process is very much a two-way process you've all talked about the conversations that have emerged um, between audience groups and between audience groups and yourselves from your work so I think it really shows us that this is this is a great two-way dialogue process that should definitely be continued um, and, um, and, and forming a new way of, of working going forward where museums can, can really reach much broader audiences or reach people in much more meaningful ways. Um, so thank you for joining us here today to share your, your projects and your experiences of finding different solutions to engage with audiences through, through the pandemic and beyond um, and I just want to say thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Goodbye.